technique is just to remember to mulch everything. You want to mulch everything in your vegetable garden. It helps to control the weeds, it retains moisture, it helps to moderate the soil temperature. Um, and then over time, that mulch breaks down. This is what I do in my garden. I put, um, I have raised beds, and then in between I have these paths that are probably about a foot and a half or two feet wide. And I put, I just go around and collect leaves, and I put them uh, in the path, and then over time they break down, and then I can pull them up and use them as mulch, and I just keep replenishing those leaves in my paths and I'm constantly bringing organic matter into my garden in that way. Now the, the uh, vegetables that we're gonna grow in the fall, most of them can be seeded directly. You don't need to go buy squash in a four inch pot because the squash seed grows so, it germinates so quick and it grows so fast. And I see a lot of nurseries will sell, you know, squash, you can. You might get a little bit of a jump on it, but you really, there's no reason, no reason to. These things are usually pretty easy to direct seed. You also want to direct seed anything that makes a root, like carrots or beets. And then these are the main things that we want to um, use from transplants, because they take a little bit longer to grow. So if you don't use transplants, you may not get them to um, be mature before you get the cold weather coming in. So green beans, cucumbers, and squash, those are, you, those are great things to plant in the fall. You plant them uh, probably in August or September, you know, seed them directly in the garden. They take, most of them take about 50 or 65 days. So these are, these are the warm season uh, vegetables that you can grow in the fall and probably have them for Thanksgiving if you plant them in August. And also I see a lot of, there's a lot of different varieties of squash out there. There's some really pretty varieties and I always, you know, I kind of laugh when I see, you know, people just always just grow that yellow fruit tank. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, branch out a little bit. There's lots of varieties of squash out there. And this, of course, I'm talking about summer squash, not winter squash. Winter squash, you don't want to grow for the fall because it takes about 90 to 120 days, depending on the variety. I like this variety here. It's called freckles. It grows really fast. It just makes a light uh, pale green, uh, kind of a zucchini squash. It takes about 50 days. I have harvested kind of that in March and I've been harvesting that all of May. Uh, you want to you pick your vegetables at their peak. You, you know, when they become the size of a baseball bat, that's too big. So, you know, even this zucchini right here is almost 12 inches. That's really, you don't really need to let them grow that big. You pick them when they're about four to six inches. They're, they're much better, they're much tastier. And also, the, the more frequently you pick them, the more squash your plant is going to produce. The same thing goes with beans and cucumbers. You know, pick them frequently and, you know, the plant is going to produce a lot. Unlike broccoli or cauliflowers, it's going to produce one head. The uh, cucumbers and beans and squash will just keep producing if you'll keep picking. So eggplant, peppers, and tomatoes are the other warm season green uh, vegetables that we can grow in the fall, but you just need to get them started from, plant them from transplants around um, mid-July, maybe August. You know, you can get them planted, get them going. Uh, if you, lots of times you can grow the peppers and the eggplant through the summer and they'll go crazy for you in the fall. In fact, I usually have so much eggplant left over, I'm giving it away <laughs> at Halloween. Uh, <laughs> eggplant really likes the warm weather and if you plant eggplant now, it will probably make it through summer. I think most summers, mine does fine. It may not produce as much in the summer, but it really comes on strong in the fall. And peppers do the same thing. Tomatoes, I usually start with new transplants in the fall. Already my tomatoes have got spider mites, and I can see early blight is starting the yellow leaves down the base <coughs> of the plant. So my tomatoes are loaded, but I know there's no way they're going to make it through the summer. <coughs> Um, a lot of people are interested in heirlooms. When you do plant tomatoes in the fall, you want to look for tomatoes that have a shorter days to harvest. Some, uh, some tomatoes, and I forgot to look on my list to see, but some of them, you know, could take 80 days, and you want to look for some that would produce a little bit quicker than that. This is Brandywine. When we're talking about heirlooms, it is, it is my favorite heirloom, I think. It's just really juicy, and I do try to grow it every year. One year, I have... The thing about heirlooms is they're really good, but they're not totally dependable. They're not as reliable as growing something like a celebrity that I know is going to produce a bunch of tomatoes on one plant every year. 
these are what I got like six brandy wines on one plant all at one time and that's all it produced. The next year it produced one and that's what it looked like. <laughs> so, you know, it's uh, not completely reliable, at least not in my garden. Some of y'all might have a greener thumb and get it really, uh, get them to grow really well for you. This, have y'all seen this on your tomatoes before? This is the result of um, damage from a leaf-footed bug. And this is what it looks like, in case you don't know. These are the babies over here. They're little orange and black, uh, soft-bodied insects. They have a flat hind leg. You can see it already on that one, you know, just like that. So when you see those little orange and black ones, they're much easier to control when you get them like that. When they get to be like this and they fly at you and they attack you in the garden, <laughs> get them when they're young. Um, potatoes, I think uh, you can grow potatoes in the fall. I've just harvested, oh, every day I go out um, and harvest a couple of pounds of potatoes. I mean, I haven't pulled them all up yet. I'm kind of holding off and letting them get a little bit bigger, but I grow potatoes in the spring with um, certified seed potatoes that I get at the at my local nursery. There's a place called Ronegers where you can order potatoes for the spring. You can also grow them in the fall. It's just harder to find the, the seed potatoes in the fall. So what I usually do is save some little potatoes from my spring harvest, and I'll just keep them in a cool place in the house and then I bring them out a couple of weeks before I'm ready to plant. Um, and then uh, wait until they, they start, the eyes start to swell, and then I'll plant them in the fall. And I won't get as big a harvest in the fall, but still potatoes are really fun to grow. And when you store your potatoes, you want to store them dirty. Don't, you wipe them off, but don't wash them, because when you wash them, you could, um, that if that moisture stays in them, you could spread disease or spread, from, you know, uh, if there's any kind of um, bacteria or anything on the plants or the potatoes, it can spread to the other to the other ones in the in the grouping. So, and if you keep your potatoes around long enough, they take on a personality all their own. So, do be sure that if you do harvest a bunch of potatoes, eat them. You know, I just feel like I keep saving my potatoes for a special occasion, and then they kind of start to do this. So, uh, you know, once you get your potatoes out and I cure them and let them. You know, let them dry off, and just, I store them even under the bed, like in a flat box or whatever, just for, you know, because I usually have a lot of potatoes, so I have them all over my house, and sometimes I forget <laughs> about them. <laughs> okay, now we're going to talk about cool season crops. These are, the, these are the ones that we're going to be planting in the fall, and that they can, you know, they can take the cold weather that we have here, especially in San Antonio. Um, you do want to practice crop rotation in your garden. Um, if, if you, I hope that you'll have a big enough garden where you can move around the different uh, types of vegetables. There's different vegetable families, and so you want to rotate the crop families. The hardest thing to do is to ro break, uh, rotate that crucifer family, because look how many vegetables are in that family. So if you grow um, cabbage in one spot, you don't want to grow any of those other crucifers in that, that spot for, if you can, for three years. That's what they recommend. So if you grow those in uh, one year, then put the legumes there the next year, and then put carrots there the next year, and then go back and put crucifers in. So try to rotate around in your garden. If you have a small garden and you can't, then what I usually hear is people just say to, um, you know, add lots of compost to your garden. That's, a, that's the best you can do. Artichokes can be grown here as annuals. Some people will grow them as um, perennials, but for me, they kind of get a lot of insects in the summer and they don't really like our, our heat that much, but they're easy to grow in the, in the fall just by putting in transplants. They might need a little bit of protection through the winter, but uh, my artichokes did fine this last winter. I did put a little box around them and covered them with leaves, um, and they did okay through that really hard freeze that we had. Um, and then treat them as an annual, pull them up after you've harvested your artichokes and um, plant them again the following fall. They do get really big, so you want to leave two or three feet, about three feet, really, between your plants, because they can get really big. Um, if you, you harvest them, you know, while the buds are still tight, but if you don't, they'll, uh, they'll start to open, and they make these really beautiful blooms in the spring. They're a, they're a giant thistle. Arugula, you see these uh, descriptions in seed catalogs, like sharp, peppery uh, taste. I have a 
Bill Adams is a retired county agent from Houston. Y'all may know of him. He says arugula tastes like uh, dirty socks dipped in horseradish. <laughs> yeah, somebody. So I like to grow arugula. It's easy to grow. Um, it grows really fast. You just put the seed in the ground, and boom, it'll come up really fast. But you want to harvest it while it's still young and tender before it gets too pungent. And I like just mixing it with other greens instead of, you know, like I wouldn't serve my kids an arugula salad that's just arugula because, you know, it does have a very strong flavor. But it's really easy to grow. Beets are one of my favorite things to grow in the fall. And then they're really good for you too. You plant them in September or October. You, October, you want to put the seed directly in the ground. You don't really want to transplant root uh, beets because they 